सजन प्रिय प्रिय कर निर्मा पूजित नाना शास्त्र विचार नहीं And now, chapter 37, impetuses for Krishna's service. Tribhuvani manu saranya kano na na sathi chaur ni kani kano sadharma sangasthapako. The causeless mercy of Krishna, the dust of his lotus feet, his prasad and association with his devotees, are some impetuses toward a devotee's engagement in transcendental loving service to the Lord. Krishna exhibited his causeless mercy when he was present at the departure of Grandfather Bhishma. During the battle of Kurukshetra, Bhishma Dev, the grandfather of Arjun, was lying on a bed of arrows before departing from this mortal world. When Lord Krishna, Maharaj Yudhisthir, and the other Pandavas approached Bhishma Dev, he was very grateful to Lord Krishna, and he addressed the Brahmin military commander Kripa Charya thus: Quote, "My dear Kripa Charya." Just see the wonderful causeless mercy of Lord Krishna. I am most unfortunate. I have no qualification. I was opposing Krishna's most intimate friend Arjun. I even tried to kill him. I have so many disqualifications, and yet the Lord is still so kind that he has come to see me at the last point of my life. He is worshipable by all great sages but still he is so merciful that he has come to see an abominable person like me. Unquote. Sometimes the vibration of Lord Krishna's flute is bugling his smiling his footmarks on the ground the transcendental fragrance of his body and the appearance of a new cloud in the sky also become impetuses for ecstatic love of him in the vidagda madhava there is the following statement quote when krishna was playing on his flute baladev very anxiously declared quote Just see how after hearing the transcendental sound of Krishna's flute Indra the king of heaven is crying in his heavenly kingdom and from his teardrops falling on the ground Vrindavan appears to have become a celestial residence for the demigods unquote Ecstatic love for Krishna which is known as anubhava is symptomized by the following signs One becomes engaged exclusively in the service of the Lord, being attentive to carry out the orders of the Lord faithfully. One becomes undisturbed and non-envious in full transcendental loving service to the Lord. And one makes friendship with the devotees of the Lord who are situated in faithful service to him. All these symptoms are called anubhava, ecstatic love. The first symptom of anubhava or engagement in a particular type of service is exemplified by Daruka, a servant of Krishna who used to fan Krishna with a chamra, a bunch of hair. When he was engaged in such service, he was filled with ecstatic love, and the symptoms of ecstatic love became manifest in his body. But Daruka was so serious about his service that he checked all of these manifestations of ecstatic love and considered them hindrances to his engagement he did not care very much for these manifestations although they automatically developed in shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto 86th chapter verse 38 there is a statement of how shruta dev a brahman from the country called mitala in northern india became so overpowered with joy as soon as he saw Krishna that immediately after bowing to the Lord's lotus feet he stood up and began to dance raising his two arms above his head 
one of the devotees of Lord Krishna once addressed him in this manner, quote, My dear Lord, although you are not a professional dancer, by your dancing you have so astonished us that we can understand that you are personally the master of all dancing. Certainly you must have learned this dancing art directly from the goddess of love. Unquote. When a devotee dances in ecstatic love, there are manifestations of symptoms which are called sattvika. Sattvika means that they are from the transcendental platform. They are not symptoms of material emotion. They come from the soul proper. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 85th Chapter, verse 38, Shukdev Goswami tells Maharaj Parikshit that after surrendering everything unto the lotus feet of Vamanadev, Bali Maharaj immediately caught hold of the lotus feet of the Lord and pressed them to his heart. Being overwhelmed with joy, he manifested all the symptoms of ecstatic love with tears in his eyes and a faltering voice. In such expressions of ecstatic love, there are many other subsidiary symptoms, such as jubilation, withering, silence, disappointment, moroseness, reverence, thoughtfulness, remembrance, doubtfulness, confidence, eagerness, indifference, restlessness, impudence, shyness, inertness, illusion, madness, ghastliness, contemplation, dreaming, disease, and signs of death. When a devotee meets Krishna, there are symptoms of jubilation, pride, and perseverance. And when he is feeling great separation from Krishna, the symptoms of ghastliness, disease, and signs of death become prominent. It is stated in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th chapter, verse 5, that when Lord Krishna returned from the battlefield of Kurukshetra to his home at Dwarka, all the residents of Dwarka began to talk with him as a child talks lovingly to his father after the father's return from foreign countries. This is an example of jubilation. When Bahulashva, the king of Mithila, saw Krishna at his palace, he decided to offer his respects by bowing down before him at least a hundred times. But he was so overcome by feelings of love that after bowing down only once, he forgot his position and could not rise again. In the Skanda Purana, a devotee tells Lord Krishna, quote, My dear Lord, as the sun evaporates all the water on the ground by its scorching heat, so my mental state has dried away the luster of my face and body due to separation from you." Unquote. This is an example of withering in ecstatic love.
an expression of disappointment was made by Indra, the king of heaven. When he saw the sun god, Indra told him, quote, My dear sun god, your sunshine is very glorious because it reaches unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, the master of the Yadu dynasty. I have thousands of eyes, but they have proved to be useless because not even for a moment are they able to see the lotus feet of the Lord." Unquote. Reverential devotion for the Lord gradually increases and transforms itself into ecstatic love, then affection, and then attachment. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 38th chapter, verse 6, Akrura says, quote, Because I am going to see Lord Krishna today, all symptoms of inauspiciousness have already been killed. My life is now successful because I shall be able to offer my respects unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead." Unquote. Another devotee in ecstatic reverential affection once said, quote, When will that glorious day in my life come when it will be possible for me to go to the bank of the Yamuna and see Lord Krishna playing there as a cowherd boy. Unquote. When there is no diminishing of this ecstatic love, and when it is freed from all kinds of doubt, the devotee has reached the stage called steady love for Krishna. In this stage, all expressions of unhappiness by the devotee are called anubhava, or ecstatic loving symptoms. The symptom of ecstatic affection with reverence felt by Bali Maharaj was expressed as follows, quote, My dear Lord, you have simultaneously punished me and showed me your causeless mercy. My conclusion is that when I have taken shelter of your lotus feet, I shall never be disturbed in any condition of life. Whether you give me the opportunity to enjoy all the yogic perfections, or you put me into the most abominable condition of hellish life, I shall never be disturbed." Unquote. Krishna himself after seeing Bali Maharaj told Uddhava, quote, My dear friend, how can I express the glorious characteristics of Bali Maharaj, the son of Virochana? Although the king of the Suras, or demigods, was cursed by this son of Virochana, and although I cheated him in my incarnation as Vamana, taking away his dominions throughout the universe, and although I still criticized him for not fulfilling his promise, I have just now seen him in his kingdom, and he feelingly expressed his love for me." Unquote. Bali was a king of the demons who waged war against the demigods and nearly conquered the universe. When the demigods prayed for help, the Lord appeared as Bamanadev, a dwarf Brahmin, and asked Bali for three paces of land. Bali agreed, and Bamin covered all the worlds with his first two steps. Then he demanded to know where his third pace was to be. Bali offered his own head beneath the Lord's foot and thus became a Mahajan or great devotee. When such a feeling of love becomes intensified, it is called affection. In that affectional stage, one cannot bear separation from Krishna even for a moment. One devotee told Daruka, the servant of Krishna, quote, My dear Daruka, when you become like wood because of your separation from Krishna, it is not so wonderful. Whenever any devotee sees Krishna, his eyes become filled with water, and in separation any devotee like you would become stunned, standing just like a wooden doll. That is not a very wonderful thing." Unquote. There is a statement about Uddhava's symptoms of love. When he saw Lord Krishna, his eyes filled with tears and created a river which flowed down toward the sea of Krishna to offer tribute 
as a wife offers tribute to her husband. When his body erupted with goose pimples, he appeared like the Kadamba flower, and when he began to offer prayers, he appeared completely distinct from all other devotees. When affection is symptomized by direct happiness and distress, it is called attraction. In such an attracted state of ecstatic love, one can face all kinds of disadvantages calmly. Even at the risk of death, such a devotee is never bereft of the transcendental loving service of the Lord. A glorious example of this ecstatic love was exhibited by King Pariksit when he was at the point of death. Although he was bereft of his entire kingdom, which spread all over the world, and although he was accepting not even a drop of water in the seven days remaining to him, because he was engaged in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord from Shukdev Goswami, he was not in the least distressed. On the contrary, he was feeling direct transcendental ecstatic joy in association with Shukdev Goswami. One devotee has confidently expressed this opinion, quote, If a drop of Lord Krishna's mercy can be bestowed upon me, then I shall feel completely carefree, even in the midst of a fire or an ocean. But if I become bereft of his causeless mercy, then even if I become the king of Dwarka, I would be simply an object for pinpricks." Unquote. Devotees such as Maharaj Pariksit and Uddhava are all situated in ecstatic attraction on the basis of affection, and in that state of affection a feeling of friendship becomes manifest. When Uddhava was freed from all material contamination, he saw the Lord, and his throat became choked up and he could not speak. By the movements of his eyebrows alone, he was embracing the Lord. Such ecstatic love has been divided by great scholars into two groups, addition and subtraction. If a devotee is not directly associated with the Lord, it is called subtraction. In this state of love, one is constantly fixed with his mind at the lotus feet of the Lord. A devotee in this state becomes very eager to learn of the transcendental qualities of the Lord. The most important business of such a devotee is attaining the association of the Lord. In the Nursinga Purana, there is a statement about King Ikshvaku which illustrates this state of ecstatic love. Because of his great affection for Krishna, King Ikshvaku became greatly attached to the black cloud, the black deer the deer's black eyes, and the lotus flower, which is always compared to the eyes of the Lord. In the 10th canto, 38th chapter, verse 10 of the Bhagavatam, Akura thinks, quote, Since the Lord has now appeared to diminish the great burden of the world, and is now visible to everyone's eyes in his personal transcendental body, when we see him before us, is that not the ultimate perfection of our eyes?" Unquote. In other words, Akrura realized that the perfection of the eyes is fulfilled when one is able to see Lord Krishna. Therefore, when Lord Krishna was visible on the earth by direct appearance, everyone who saw him surely attained perfection of sight. In the Krishna Karnamrita, written by Bilva Mangal Thakur, there is this expression of eagerness in ecstatic love. Quote, How miserable it is, my dear Krishna, O friend of the hopeless! O merciful Lord, how can I pass these thankless days without seeing you? Unquote. 
A similar sentiment was expressed by Uddhava when he wrote a letter to Krishna and said, quote, My dear Supreme King of Russia, you are the vision of nectar for the eyes, and without seeing your lotus feet and the effulgence of your body, my mind is always morose. I cannot perceive any peace under any circumstance. Besides that, I am feeling every moment's separation to be like the duration of many, many long years." Unquote. In the Krishna Karnamrita, it is also said, quote, My dear Lord, you are the ocean of mercy. With my arms placed upon my head, I am bowing down before you with all humility and sincerity. I am praying unto you, my Lord. Would you be pleased just to sprinkle a little of the water of your glance upon me? That will be a great satisfaction." Unquote. A devotee of Lord Krishna said, quote, When even Shashishekara, or Lord Shiva, is unable to see you, what chance is there for me, who am lower than an ordinary worm? I have only committed misdeeds. I know that I am not at all fit to offer my prayers to you, but because you are known as Dina Bandhu, the friend of the fallen, I humbly pray that you will kindly purify me by the beams of your transcendental glance. If I become thoroughly bathed by your merciful glance, then I may be saved. Therefore, my Lord, I am requesting you to please bestow upon me your merciful glance." Unquote. 